I think, you know, sentiment is so negative and we have a lot of analysts forecasting, you know, really dour um, expectations and profits need to come down. You know, revenue forecasts or earnings forecasts need to be revised downward. And I think we're going to see a lot of surprises to the upside. Frankly, it's not going to take much um, to surprise to the upside. Um, you know, we've seen about 21 percent of companies report so far. Seventy percent of them have beat beat expectations. Um, so I think, you know, we'll see some measure of that continue. Several big name tech companies will report earnings next week. What should investors be looking out for here? Um, well, you know, stocks love to climb that wall of worry. So are we, you know, is the economy slowing down? Absolutely. But I, I think, um, you know, if companies are able to continue increasing their bottom line and growing their revenue and growing their, their profits and earnings, that's ultimately what's going to drive markets. Um, so that's certainly what I'll be looking out for. The Fed kicking off its two-day meeting tomorrow. It is expected to raise interest rates by another three quarters of a percentage point. What impact, Aaron, do you expect this will have on markets and, of course, the overall economy? Well, I think any impact is really already priced in. You know, that's kind of the consensus for what the Fed is going to do. Um, so I think a lot of that is baked in. I think really what we'll want to see is, you know, what happens moving forward. Um, and I think what the Fed is doing is working thus far. You know, we are seeing that tightening in the housing market and those things starting to cool off. We're also seeing commodities prices like oil um, and timber and copper. Those things are coming down, which is all helping to bring inflation down to really, you know, help get the Fed to, uh, to where it's trying to go. And as the Fed continues to rein in inflation, where do you think prices go from here? Do you believe we are at or close to a peak or are there signals that prices will continue to increase around us? That's a great question. I, I wish I knew the answer to that. Um, I think that inflation is probably starting to cool um, and will moderate and cool into next year. Um, if you look at like the bond market, for example, um, the break even on 10 year uh, tips is signaling about 2.35%. Um, so I, I do think that we're going to start to see that cool. How long that will take, um, you know, is anybody's guess. What advice are you giving to investors during this time of volatility and, of course, the economic uncertainty that so many of us are facing? Are there any stocks, companies, sectors that you're keeping an eye on? Um, well, we are long-term investors, and we really believe in having a balanced and diversified portfolio. So I think the biggest thing I'm trying to tell my clients is, you know, really that we've been here before. Um, it's not different this time. And, you know, everything is cyclical. So if we do happen to go into recession, you know, what happens after recession is expansion. Um, but really, the most important thing is sticking to your goals and having the long term view. You know, do we think that markets are going to be higher in one year and three years and five years from now? I think the answer is, is very likely yes. How do you think challenges like the pandemic and China's zero tolerance policy and, of course, the ongoing war in Ukraine will continue to impact markets? It's another great question. Um, I think, you know, what's happening with the Ukraine and Russia is, is really a tragedy. And hopefully um, that will be resolved sooner than later. That certainly impacting um, commodities markets. Um, everything happening in China is impacting, you know, the, uh, the supply chain um, and some of those slowdowns. But, um, you know, as I said, there's always going to be headwinds. There's always going to be risks. Um, and, you know, stocks and markets really love to climb that wall of worry. Uh, so I think those, those uncertainties and those headwinds will never go away. Uh, but we really need to focus on, you know, what's working and what's ultimately going to bring markets higher. What financial advice would you give to younger people with limited investing experience who want to save money and, of course, build wealth over time? Um, well, I would say it's never too early to start. And the earlier that you can start, the better off you'll be. Um, do some reading, speak with an advisor, put a plan together. Uh, but really, the, the earlier that you can start saving and really just investing in, in the broader, broader market, um, is really going to pay dividends for your future and your retirement. What are the unique qualities about today's economy compared to other times preceding economic downturns in our country? You know, I think um, the pandemic has really sort of turned the economy upside down. Um, you talk about all different kinds of indicators. You know, some, some economists think that we're mid-cycle, beginning of the cycle, end of the cycle, you know, recession, not recession. So, um, I think that the response to the pandemic was was needed, and it's obviously done a lot of good. Um, but you know, we're we're definitely still feeling the uh, the ripple effects and the after effects. Um, so, you know, when that will end, who knows? Um, but I, I definitely am optimistic on the future coming out of this. 